Reagan and today I have a very exciting video to film for you today. I am doing a ginormous book haul in partnership with Barnes & Noble. Essentially right now they're having the most epic 50% off sale that is going on through September 3rd. I'll have all the information for the sale down below if you're interested in shopping it yourself. But I went in the store and basically bought so much stuff. I mean, they literally have such a wide variety of books from so many different genres, books I've been meaning to buy for a while, books I'd never even heard before. So I went a little, um, I went a little wild. I bought a lot of things and I couldn't be more excited to show them to you today. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and dive right into the book haul. I'm literally just going to be grabbing them one by one out of this big old bag next to me. So Let's get started. The first book I have to show you guys is Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. Yes, I already own this book. It's because I love this book. They basically have a different cover for the paperback edition than they do for the hardcover edition, which I already owned. And when I saw this beautiful thing for 50% off, I honestly just could not say no. I'm a collector of books. I like to have my favorite books in as many beautiful editions as I possibly can. So. Don't judge me too harshly. This is an incredible YA fantasy novel that's dual perspective. One of our perspectives characters' names is Lasso Strange, and he is a scholar of this very mysterious city called Weep. One day they basically disappeared, no one can locate them, and everything was lost about them, including their name, so their new name is actually called Weep. One day an envoy just kind of miraculously appears from the city and begins to collect individuals who are the greatest of their craft. They actually pick Laszlo and bring him along to the city as a scholar and there, there Laszlo begins to unlock and discover the secrets of the city. This is truly just an enthralling, beautiful novel by Lainey Taylor. She does such a wonderful job exploring the concept of war and hatred, especially over multiple generations. I love this book and the sequel comes out really, really soon. So I'm just excited to have another edition of this on my shelf. And the cover for the paperback is just so nice. Could you really blame me truly? Next up is a book I had never actually heard of before, but right when I saw it, I knew I needed to get it. And that is The Race to Save the Romanovs, The Truth Behind the Secret Plans to Rescue the Russian Imperial Family by Helen Rappaport. This is a nonfiction story of basically Helen Rappaport investing investigating and uncovering the mystery behind this family's murder, but also uncovering a bunch of international plots that were designed to save this family when they are initially kidnapped. I love Russian history. It's no secret, um, especially imperialistic Russian history. I love learning about all the different families and all the different uh, dynasties and things like that. I just think it's so fascinating. So really sold me, specifically the one by Simon, Simon Sebag Montefiore, who wrote the Romanovs, which I also own. So I just thought I needed to add this book to my collection ASAP because I'm a Russian history nerd, okay? Okay. Next up, I picked up The Bookshop of Yesterdays by Amy Meyerson. This is a book I had also never heard of, but I bought it because it's set in a book uh, store. It's a contemporary fiction about a woman kind of discovering and coming to terms with a lot of the family drama in her life. I love the story life of AJ Fickery, which is also set in a bookstore. So these books felt like they had kind of similar vibes, so I picked it up right away. This follows our main character, Miranda, who spent a majority of her childhood basically playing in the stacks of her eccentric uncle's bookstore. There, he would invent scavenger hunts for her to keep her entertained growing up. However, once her mother and her uncle had this very mysterious falling out, she no longer uh, went to this bookstore. 16 years later, however, after her uncle passed away, she inherits this bookstore and there he left her one final scavenger hunt. Again, this book just sounds really charming, probably emotional, and I again just really love the bookstore setting. I don't know, it just sounds like it will be like a book that could really touch my heart, so I picked it up. Next up is a book I've been meaning to pick up for a while. So when I saw it for 50% off, I was overjoyed truth be told. And that is The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. Um, this is a adult fantasy novel that has been sweeping the internet. 
It sounds dark, it sounds incredibly intense, but I mean, I love fantasy, so I'm here for every second of it. Reading over the synopsis, this sounds like a very dark start to an intense fantasy series. It follows our main character, Rin, who is a peasant. She's part of the poorest class, so when she basically passes this aptitude test with flying colors, everyone around her is very, very surprised. Rin herself then gets accepted into this very elite military school, which even surpasses her own expectations. But once she begins to go to the school, she is quickly ostracized and outcast for her rank, which drives her to levels of desperation she wasn't expecting. There she discovers that she possesses magical powers from shamanism. Once she begins to explore these powers with her seemingly insane teacher, she gets wrapped up in all sorts of empire politics. And again, this book just sounds so intense and so dark. I've heard some really good reviews. Everyone says this is not like a happy-go-lucky fantasy book, but I like dark fantasy, so I'm excited to see how I like this. The cover is absolutely beautiful with the like ink paintings, but yeah, 50% off. I bought it. Next up, I picked up a few middle grade novels. The first one is The List by Patricia Ford. And this just sounds like a really interesting kind of utopian fantasy novel. This is set in the city of Ark, which is the last safe city on earth. All the residents of Ark, um, to survive, only know 500 words, except our main character, Letta. She is an apprentice to the wordsmith, so she gets to learn all of the words that exist in the human dictionary, even dangerous ones like freedom and music. This novel kind of gives me giver vibes in a way, as a young girl kind of explores a very dark, utopian seeming society. I also love the concept of words can be dangerous and also words can present freedom. Uh, so yes, I am intrigued about this quite a bit. I think I'm going to like it a lot and I absolutely love the cover as well. Next up, I have The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Brownhill. This won the Newberry Medal of Excellence. So right when I saw that, I was like, okay, gonna buy you at 50% off. So this is a novel set in a world where every year a village basically sacrifices a newborn baby to the forest, thinking that this will keep the evil witch from attacking them. But in reality, the evil witch, Zahn, is actually very kind. And she takes this child in, raises them for a short time, and finds a family who needs a child on the, in a village on the other side of the village. However, one year, the child that was left, Zahn accidentally feeds this child moonlight instead of starlight, which gives her a set of incredible powers. When she does this, she decides that she's going to raise this young girl as her own and names her Luna. When Luna's 13th birthday comes around, she has to face the consequences of essentially having this magical power, especially when a young prince from that village is determined to save his people by killing this evil witch. This just sounds like a lovely coming of age fantasy fairy tale centered story, which I honestly love. Um, so I got it. Next up, I got Harry's Trees by John Cohen. And this just seems like a really interesting story about unlikely people coming together to basically heal and find solace. This follows our main character, Harry, who is an analyst for the American Forest Service. However, when his wife dies suddenly, he's no longer able to kind of face his everyday life and he escapes to the northern wilderness of Pennsylvania to basically escape and hopefully find some peace. However, fate intervenes when he runs into a young, very willful girl and her mother who are both struggling to pick up the pieces of their own lives. Together, they kind of make this weird mishmash uh, group of individuals, especially because this young girl, Arena, thinks Harry is the key to fixing everything. But yeah, this just seems like a really redeeming and uplifting story about friendship and like finding like home and other people. And I think the wilderness setting is really interesting. So I got it. Next up, I got Sky in the Deep, which is a dark YA fantasy story, which we all know is my favorite. And this honestly sold me because the blurb is like part Wonder Woman, part Vikings, all heart. Viking, fantasy story, seriously, could not be more excited about this. This follows our main character, Elaine, who has basically spent her whole life training and fighting in vicious wars against a rival clan. However, her world is basically turned upside down when she sees her brother fighting for this rival clan, and from there she has to escape the battlefield into the wilderness and try to survive. There she meets another individual named Fisk, who is one of her brother's friends. They do not like each other, but they also try to devise this plan that will hopefully bring the two clans together to 
end all of this fighting. Again, Viking YA fantasy seems dark. I love the cover. It just looks so good. The very last book I picked up was Ash Princess by Laura Sebastian. This book sounds absolutely incredible. It follows her main character Theo who was six years old when a neighboring kingdom invaded her land, killed her mother, and basically has been keeping her captive in her castle ever since. She has been named Ash Princess as a demeaning title as her mother was called the Fire Queen. And for 10 years Theo has been plotting and planning on ways to try to save her kingdom and take it back. And finally, one night allows and presents itself for her to finally put her plan in motion. This is a book about vengeance and a young girl trying to save herself and everyone else uh, after her kingdom has been taken captive. It sounds dark, it sounds intense, and I want more. Alrighty guys, those are all of the books I picked up from the Barnes & Noble 50% off sale, and I will leave a link to the sale down below if you're interested in shopping it yourself. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you soon with another video soon. Goodbye!